This is Geoffrey of Illardwell. Welcome to Pompey's Rome, a new campaign. Let's play from the Emperor's edition of Rome 2. The gods smile on you, Octavian. You're a good soldier. I'm a politician. We don't need more politicians. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. Why do you think Caesar favored you, sir? I was loyal. No, Octavian. He saw in you the potential to continue his legacy. Not to follow him, but to exceed him. The successors of Julius Caesar divided the Roman Empire between them, not with the intention of partitioning it, but rather with the intention of governing it together. That was the idea. However, in the end, they ended up in civil war. I am not entirely familiar with the history and politics, but that is the theme behind the Emperor's edition of Rome to the Imperator Augustus' campaign pack. And from this pack I will be playing this time Pompey's Rome, Pompeius Magnus, who was one of the four members of the Triumvirate, and he starts this campaign controlling Sicily, Sardinia and Corsica. Octavian controls Rome and Gaul. Mark Antony controls all of the East, including the vassals of Rome, while Lepidus controls the Iberian Peninsula and the western part of northern Africa. I am playing this campaign on very hard because last time the campaign was very easy on hard. Hopefully the, there will be a challenge this time. Another aspect of this is that Pompey has no vassals so there will be less worries about reaching Imperium. Among the characteristics of this campaign is that Pompey has a seat of naval power in the center of the Mediterranean. Uh, the shores are controlled by the second triumvirate, that is Octavian and Lepidus. We have to bide our time since the Atenius alliance will likely collapse. Our useful strategic locations could be helpful in brokering an alliance with Mark Antony. I completely disregarded the advice. The narrow confines of the islands made it necessary to expand in order to support the economy, so Pompey attacked Cosentia, won Cosentia, leading to war with Octavian. Octavian also went to war with Mark Antony, which was a good thing. Pompey then continued his advance further into Italy, taking Brundisium and Beneventum, appearing in the front of Rome, besieging Rome. It was a fabulous siege. Octavian's men were defeated in the end, and Pompey entered Roman triumph. So here's the Capitolium, very very beautiful, very impressive, the temples of Jove and Juno and the other Roman gods. Here are the streets of Rome, excellent, amazing work from uh, the Creative Assembly. The, here's the final capture point, the main capture point, the Senate presumably, the giant statue of Juno, the Capitolium looks absolutely stunning. A beautiful stadium, part of the battle map. A hill next to the stadium, very picturesque. It was an easy siege. I may make a separate video clip about it. In the meantime, three enemy armies appeared one barbarian army and two legions of octavian all three were very strong they were harassed by our spies nonetheless they remained strong 
but they sat there and did nothing. And this campaign is on very hard. Having conquered Rome, the allies of Mark Antony were keen to start trade with us. A fleet blockaded Asculum. There was a naval battle that we won, although we were outnumbered by more than 3 to 1. We only lost 4 ships, we defeated the enemy fleet, then a small army uh, marched into Asculum, fought a battle and took the city. An alliance was forged between Lepidus and Octavian. Next we blockaded Ariminium from the sea. Although we defeated the garrison and sank the ships, we didn't have a land army to take, our, to take Ariminium. There was a battle outside Rome when one of Octavian's legions encamped there across the border, Pompey attacked their camp and defeated them. It was a beautiful but not a very hard battle, it was an easy battle. So this is the aftermath of that battle, following which Pompey attacked Aretium and took Aretium. Next we signed a non-aggression Packed with Mark Antony. We then engaged in a blockade of Salona to prevent Octavian's legions from marching into the Balkans and Greece. They were already gathering and were on their way. We also had a sea battle outside Salona that uh, we won, losing only three ships. It was an overwhelming victory which gave time our allies to regroup and organize their defense and fight back. It was a good victory. We were outnumbered by more than 3 to 1. Next we landed our marines and took Salona, thus ensuring the security of the Balkans against Octavian's legions. We have nearly 50% of the Senate on our side and here is the strategic situation. We have made an alliance with Egypt. Here's the plan. Uh, the uh, neutrals are in uh, neutral grey. The enemies of our uh, faction are in red. Here in green is the progress with the provinces with uh, order public order. Syracuse is the wealthiest province. The fastest growth is in Latium and uh, Antonin's Rome agreed to a non-aggression pact that helped us to make trade agreements with uh, his vassals. And so the French Triumvirate now is united along with the vassals of Rome against the other two members of the second triumvirate. Except that the Nori decided to attack us, that would be interesting. Following our alliance with Mark Antony, we reached one of our objectives. And at this point, a war of spies and agents began in northern Italy. Uh, mainly the agents were from the Nori, that's what that event was about. Our first legion, Legio I Fidelis, attacked and took Patavium while that agent war was going on. We strengthened Salona by reinforcements arriving from the sea. And at the same time, uh, while our Egyptian allies were marching on Carthage, we blockaded Carthage from the sea. Lepidus' armies, which were inside Carthage to preempt an attack from Egypt, attacked our fleet but were defeated at sea, losing large armies. Nonetheless, we had to interrupt the blockade. We lost one of our patricians to one of the Nori spies called Vercingetorix. We nonetheless took Vercingetorix 
in the end we even recovered our patrician eventually that had been pro probably imprisoned in uh, Noria. Noria. Next we marched to Genoa, defeated its garrison, took Genoa. Here our glorious leader Pompeius Magnus. We also defeated the uh, three ships that were in Genoa and we are now controlling practically all of Italy except for Mediolanum. At that point no fewer than six legions of uh, Octavian appeared in northern Italy so we were forced to abandon Genoa and Patavium. We lost a uh, glass resource in Patavium. Our garrison fleets were destroyed. The garrison armies were destroyed. The two settlements were lost. And to add insult to injury, our uh, acquired um, spy uh, Brogia was injured. Pompey laid in ambush and managed to uh, ambush on of Octavian's legions. It was completely destroyed. Other of Octavian's legions were constantly harassed by our spies and agents. And eventually we saved the day. We marched back into Patavian Pompeius, took uh, Genua. And he then marched uh, straight away to Mediolanum, by which time nearly all the Octavian legions had walked away. They were marching towards Salona, and so there was only a very weak army left in Mediolanum. We took Mediolanum. The Nori attacked Patavium. That army of the Nori had been harassed by our spies. It was weakened, and so they were defeated. This is a strategic situation. We have all of Italy and the northern part of the coast of Dalmatia. Thank you for watching.